Dominic Reyes is getting very frustrated. He's sent out a comment today, and I must tell you, I only read the headline, but I'm t I only need to read the headline because I've been in his shoes. And here's what he said. Very frustrated, like the UFC to strip John Jones. Now, let's unpack that for a second because there's a lot into the mindset of Reyes who is making that statement. With Reyes, you have a very consensus number one contender who did everything right and has been sitting out waiting. I can stop right there. Hard stop on all the information we have, but I can tell you what that means. I remember when I was waiting to fight Anderson Silva and Anderson wasn't giving me the opportunity and he was him and he was Han and they just couldn't get this done and they thought they could get it. So I was sitting on ice. I, I can assure you that is what's happening with Dominic. He's calling, looking for a match and they're going, hey, be patient. We're working on this. We're getting John to the table. And then John isn't coming to the table. So at some point, Dom is going, then strip him and let's get on with it. And what's relevant about that is don't misinterpret that for Dom wanting some easy path to the championship. He wants to go through John. He's willing to go through John. If John won't be there, he still wants the championship. And the true competitors a lot of times just do. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who I have to beat for it. And sometimes that can be a really cool thing. And sometimes that can be perceived as wanting an easy road. Doesn't make a damn bit of difference. If you're Dominic Reyes and your life's goal is to be world champion, you want that belt. Give me the opportunity. If you've got to take it off some guy who's sitting out and refusing to defend it, then hurry up and get it off him and get it, put it up for grabs, find the next best thing. He can come and challenge me later, but I want my moment. I just understand that. I understand where Dominic's at. I get it. A lot of other fighters will too. A lot of other fighters think they're going to have an opportunity. They're waiting for an opportunity. They were told they're going to get an opportunity. They've earned an opportunity any which way you want to do it. And they're sitting out. They don't have the opportunity. And it is one of those really tough things. And it, it can be very frustrating where John's at, but you're not going to have any success telling John John's wrong. You just not, it just won't go that way. Take Connor by example. I was asked a question earlier today by a reporter, and we were just visiting. It just happened to be a reporter, but we were just visiting, and they said, "Do you think Connor will box again?" And I said, "Yeah." And they go, "Oh, really? You think Connor's going to box? Are you hear anything?" I, oh, well, here, let me rephrase that. I think he is likely, as likely to box again as he is to do MMA again. You never know what Connor's going to do, but the way I interpreted the initial question of do I think he's doing it again is do I think he would do it again? The problem with him actually doing it is he boxed one time, he made $100 million, so now Connor thinks to go and box, you get $100 million. And it's a very tough mindset to get him off of. Manny Pacquiao is begging to box him. Oscar De La Hoya is thirsty as hell to box him. You're talking about 20 to $25 million. And I don't mean that that's something to sniff at. What I'm saying, though, for Conor McGregor, who did 100, go, wait a minute, I'm going to go do the exact same thing? Same press tour, same weight class, same knucklehead sport that I've never done before, and you're going to pay me a quarter of what I've already made? I only share with you that example because it's one that I know that you've heard and you can relate to. It's just a tough thing with mindset. It's just one of these kind of tough things. You go, wait, I'm going to go do the same thing, but I'm going to get, it's just one of these tough things. It's hard to shake somebody and go, that isn't the same thing. It's not. It's a whole different night. It's a whole different approach. It's a whole different gamble that the audience comes in and cares. It's not the same thing. Quit calling it the same thing. The next Super Bowl is not the same as the first Super Bowl. They're not the same thing. Jack Ryan part two is not the same as Jack Ryan part one. They're not the same thing. That's a sucker's argument that a sucker makes, and he knows it's weak. He just knows that rhetorically it's hard to refute. So you come out and you make that suggestion. A promoter can do everything to hand the answers to his guys except hand the answers to his guys. At no point is a promoter ever going to take to the podium and go, guys, we are doing absolute record numbers. Go and see what we just did. This is earth-shattering compared to what all the projections were, compared to what we thought we were going to do, to what we even hoped that we were going to do. We knocked it out of the park. They will say that much. They won't connect the dot for you. They'll assume that you have the sense that God gave geese that means we don't need you. That's the cold, hard reality. We do not need you. We just took whoever we took at a weight class that has never been featured in the history of the sport, and we knocked it out of the park. And before that, we did the same thing. And before that, Grand Slam. 
So any of you that are sitting out and think that you're affecting us, if you can read the tea leaves, you can see we don't need you. Now that is a cold, that would be a very anti-morale. It would be a terrible state. There's a number of reasons why they would simply never say that, but they'll say everything else. They'll set the table for you, but you'll get some guys that are just not smart enough to see it. You'll get some guys that'll go, wow, look what you did. Imagine if I was there, right? They still won't get it. Look how well you did. You could have done even better if I had come. Shut up. But you'll always get these really weird arguments. I had one one time with this knucklehead nutritionist. And most nutritionists that you ever meet, are they're going to be a little bit of a different guy. He was talking about to be the best athlete, you have to eat the best foods. You know, well, you know, I don't, we, we have evidence that that's contrary, whereas b- most of the great athletes of the world come from the inner city and are doing the absolute best they can just to get enough calories to sustain to stay alive. As a matter of fact, I just read an article by Michael Jordan which talked about his diet, and that was anything but your definition of great. And the nutritionist says, yes, and look how great Michael Jordan did. If he would have eaten better, just imagine how much better he could have done. And that's when I realized I was face-to-face with an idiot. 